The latest chapter of Trojan X was insane. Part four just concluded on everything that happened in the events of chapter 34 because 34 part four was a banger it did not disappoint at all because of the fact that the events that's went down in the whole fight between sandrick and mother a lot of children lost their lives tokyo has been broken and batista has his face revealed the masked man batista has his face revealed and it wasn't a huge shocker that he is the younger brother of Sandrick. Yes, he is the younger brother of Sandrick. And once we saw his face, this man is ugly as hell. This man has four eyes and the last eye that is stitched up in his forehead has been closed. So obviously once that fifth eye has automatically been unstitched and actually is open, things are about to get real. But not only that he has four eyes in his face, his whole face is stitched up. So something is just really, really wrong with this dude. I mean, we automatically know that he is a surgeon and a doctor and he's just turned himself into a chosen because he called himself a pharmacist and he's not a member of mother's clan. So of course he is the middleman. He's the person that most other people just go to so that way he can go ahead and make his money because it seems as if that he has his own purpose on what he's going to do which obviously to me i do feel like he's going to be a main villain in a certain arc of chojin x because the next scene that we saw after we get his face revealed we get his identity batista which is sandrick's brother and of course we could have figured that out because in the earlier parts of the chapter Sandrick stated that he has a younger brother and then during part three of the altercation you can just tell how based on their interactions towards each other it just seems as if they they known each other for so long and the tone of how they're interacting with each other it just seems as if that they had a hatred so of course they're either brothers or they've been really best friends and here it just clarified that they are siblings so now that he's going to be on his next move so when he's on his next move it kind of indicates that he's going to go on ahead and have a more bigger role that's probably going to affect everyone like mother the queen chosen and everyone else from the yamano mori sandrick tokyo everybody else because we all know that batista has a huge interest of azuma and that he has been watching him so after that throughout this chapter we just see how he's able to pick up his arms and trying to regroup and try to go on to his next plan but the ending of the chapter was a huge question mark because we see Azuma, Ellie, and Tokyo as they're shooken by the events that's already been taken down. So as of this moment, they're just surprised that they realize and they witness elite Chojin facing against each other because this battle that Sandrick and his squad of Chojin facing against Mother lasted seven hours. And after that seven hours, Ellie, Tokyo, and Azuma are safe and they're just staring and watching the sunrise. And Tokyo, he just stands up because he's not saying any words. And Azuma and Ellie, they're just looking at him as Tokyo says, I am quitting school. And as of this moment, we don't know what that means. We don't know if he's gonna quit school on his regular school or he's gonna quit the Yamano more. We don't know, because all of this pressure that Tokyo has been facing is just the information of the Dark Calamity, Mother, him having Chojin powers, him being the Beast Salvation, the a battle of Sandrick and Mother, just all of this happening is just gone to his head. All that he asked was that, hey, I just wanna go home and I just wanna think about this. And it probably might seem that he probably already has the mark of the beast, but we don't know yet for sure. And as of this moment, Tokyo is just 
overload with so much information and to the point where it just seems as if Tokyo is just broken. Tokyo is just broken at this moment. And so we won't know how Tokyo will feel until the next chapter. And you can't blame Tokyo because Tokyo is taking the reaction like anyone else would because all of this information everything that went down you're kind of just like well screw my normal life i'm gonna go ahead and try to be the best chosen person so i can start this dark calamity that's about to happen and maybe that's the route that tokyo is doing because obviously things are going to the next level at this moment it can't just go back to the same how it usually was so i can see that this is going to be a mark of a new beginning for tokyo azuma and ellie as their own individual or together of how they're going to handle situations further on in their lives but also as well if chojin x ever get an anime adaptation I can see this the ending of season one like this chapter is a perfect ending for season one if they can stretch it out to season two then this would be a perfect ending for season two it's just a perfect ending for a season like this chapter alone because it is just so much lore and so much conclusion to a turning point of where Trojan X is going to be but let's focus on the battle between mother and Sandrick as mother she is trying to tell Sandrick like hey i'm not the bad guy listen to me everything that you're doing right now is helping the dark calamity actually be prophesized because i seen this before and i witnessed this because when the queen chosen attack and what happened to the other chosens that happened that caused a huge friction so she's just trying to tell sandrick like hey you're making more of this dark calamity but sandrick is not listening at all because he just views mother as the enemy and it's kind of like really so because you know you kidnap my students and you try to kill my students so as of this moment this big battle happened which we see that sandrick could not keep up with mother to the point where mother using smoke abilities was very very tough and overpowering sandra's gravity which was a huge shocker for ozma and ellie to the point where sandra almost died until he went to his chaotic state so when he went to his chaotic state we see seto brought in a whole bunch of chosens to go on ahead and battle against mother as they all clash because during the whole clash of seven hours we see that some of the Yamano of Mori Chojins has actually been defeated and some of them actually died, lost limbs like Seto. Seto lost half of his body, like the lower half of his body and both of his arms. Sandrick lost his arms and some Chojins were sacrificed and they give up their lives to go on ahead and prevent Mother from escaping the Omega Tower, which happens to be that mother or zora is actually in the omega tower and they were able enough to go on ahead and save tokyo and his friends so luckily that strategy actually works so as of right now things are going to go into a whole next level because it seems as if mother she didn't want to go ahead and kill and cause all of this senseless battle to go on ahead and happen because some of these chosens actually died because she's sitting here saying why as Charada is right here by her side saying that don't worry we will have the beast stop the dark calamity from happening because it seems as if both of them the Yamano of Mori and Zora wants to stop the dark calamity from happening and actually have peace but it seems as if that they're both doing different directions on how to do it and all of this went down in this latest chapter of Trojan X. Let me know down in the comment section how you guys feel about this chapter because this chapter was insane and it was wild. But other than that, if you guys do like the video, please give it a like, subscribe, and remember, always be decent. It's the Monotone Man. And hope you guys have a wonderful day and be safe out here. Peace.